Having a family is the greatest joy of my life. Being entrusted with them is a sober reality and requires us to be willing to make the ultimate sacrifice if necessary. There is no greater honor than to serve and protect those who rely on us. There are always those trips to the doctor to remind us we can't protect them from everything. I've always found taking my children to get shots a surreal experience. It seems to contradict the protective instincts of parents. Escorting them into a controlled environment where they will be subjected to pain, no matter how necessary, is a little bizarre. I remember when my three-and-a-half-year-old went in for her immunization shots. (laughs) After the painful experience, the doctor allowed her to choose a reward from the toy chest he kept for tetanus shot recipients like her. She quickly grabbed a book and held it close to her chest. Even before learning to read, she always had a fascination with books. She held on to it all the way home. She and her younger brother are close and always have been. Only 15 months apart, they grew up as playmates. One day, soon after, I was watching them play. She never deprived her little brother of anything. Maybe attention at times, but sharing was never an issue. Whatever toys she had, she shared, and vice versa. But on this day, I noticed something different. When he reached for the book she picked out for getting her shots, she quickly moved it away from him. I watched further to see if she would do this with any of her other toys, but she didn't. Only that book. It was as if she was saying, you can play with any other toy you want, but this one is off limits. It cost me too much. I was amazed that at her young age, she identified her pain with that book. After going through what she did to get it, she wouldn't allow it to be handled so frivolously. The reward for her pain was only accessible to those who understood its value. Her developing young mind understood a price was attached to that book and she had paid it. Maybe she wanted to shield him from the same painful shot experience that she felt was described in that book. I don't know. But wouldn't it be great if we too could choose something out of a magical box for the pain we endure? What if, right after a painful experience, we could walk up to a treasure chest and exchange our pain for something better? If you reflect on your life, I'm sure you'll find meaning in what almost broke you. Think about what you might have gained or learned from past experiences with pain. It may not have happened immediately, but you did reach into that treasure chest and pull out something great. It just took some time to come to fruition. What was it? A new sense of purpose? A new perspective? A renewed appreciation? A new value system? Did it forge you into the strong and resilient person you are today? What was it? Perhaps a new you. I lost my little brother in 2019. That experience pushed the limits of my pain threshold further than anything I had ever felt before. It totally reset my capacity to endure and transformed me in ways I never thought possible. A parting gift for my best friend. I carry every memory of him like priceless treasures and replay them repeatedly in the theater of my mind. Every laugh... Every scraped knee, our first fish we caught, getting mohawks together, making slingshots out of Y-shaped branches and rubber bands, building forts and rock fights, festivals and racing cars, private conversations, our hopes and plans for the future. Sometimes, I wonder if suppressing all those memories would lighten the load of his absence. If I just boxed and taped them up and stored them in the attic of my subconscious, would it lessen the pain of his passing? Then I'm reminded of a story that originated in 1884 in a book by James Wells. It tells the story of a little girl carrying a big baby boy. Seeing her struggling, someone asked, Aren't you tired? With disbelief, she answered, He's not heavy. He's my brother. Carrying these memories is difficult. 
They remind me of who I miss and what I long for. But these memories bring me happiness and remind me of the moments we share together. Embracing these memories, despite the pain, helps me find joy in the past and inspires me to create a new and meaningful experiences with those who are still alive. The ones who bring you the most joy while they're here are the ones who will bring you the most pain when they're gone. Losing him taught me that. We should never keep the benefits of our painful experiences to ourselves. We never know how they may help someone else. On May 26, 2009, Mike Tyson's four-year-old daughter Exodus died from an accidental strangulation on a treadmill cord. In an interview, the pain was so raw, he could barely speak above a whisper. This is my best thinking at the time. Get my gun, automatic, just like this, and you just go crazy. Who are you gonna, who are you gonna hurt? Regardless, that's just my first thought. But when I went to the hospital, the people that were there, was, they're up there because their kids are dead too. Mm-hmm. Or, or about to die. Mm-hmm. So, who the hell am I? Their kids are dying too. I don't know, no. it's um, something happened that day. But whatever happened that day, was there a new Mike Tyson that came the next day? Um, no, I did some cocaine for a week. I had to get high. I had to back then. I had to get high. Um, I couldn't handle it at all. You have to go. No, you understand, right? Thank you. After some time passed, in a later conversation on his podcast, Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson, he talks about how he's dealing with losing his daughter. He said, quote, So after that, I didn't know what to do. I just didn't know what to do. The co-host asked, How'd you recover from that? I haven't, he said. I just know in order to make her happy, I have to do good things and be positive. Iron Mike Tyson, the ferocious knockout artist from Brownsville, Brooklyn, New York, found a new purpose in life, to make his baby happy by doing good things and being positive. Pain transforms us into compassionate human beings. It connects us with those who've suffered significant loss and at the very least shows them that they can and will get through it. Our painful life experiences fly in the face of this hedonistic culture we live in. No matter how hard we try to nerf the world around us, there's always those trips to the hospital. In 2018, my wife and I separated. I thought it was the end of our marriage. The family we built together was being torn apart and it devastated me. At the time, it was decided that my leaving was the best thing to do. I didn't know what to do with myself or where I would go. My brother contacted me and said I could move in with him until we figure things out. He lived about two hours away and I accepted his offer. I felt like I was losing the only good thing in my life, my family. The one thing I held on to, my source of strength was slipping out of my grasp and I couldn't do anything about it. Though I was thankful for my brother's help, I still fell into a dark place. He did his best to cheer me up and encourage me during those lonely days. I believe the devil hates the family and the order God structured. The scripture says the thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. On the surface, it looked like the thief was successful in his mission. Another destroyed family, another broken home. I'm not saying I wasn't to blame, but I know who was behind the camera directing this drama. 
So I moved in with my brother and I lived with him for about a year. We hadn't lived together since we were children. And it was great reminiscing over old times and strengthening our bond as brothers. We spent every day together and enjoyed the camaraderie. It gave my wife and I time to work things out, and we eventually did, and I moved back home. Unbeknownst to us, my brother passed away shortly after that. After I laid my little brother to rest and started this healing journey, I noticed something that I hadn't before. The scripture informs us that God uses the bad things in our lives and turns them around for our good. In Genesis 50, 20, Joseph declares, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. You see, the devil meant to harm me by separating me from my family. But God used that separation to give me some time with my brother, who was about to make his journey home. And for that, I'm forever thankful. Hold on to the ones you love. Cherish every moment and appreciate those you have in your life. When they're gone, look for what they left you in that treasure chest. One night, my four-year-old daughter and her toddler brother were playing in their room when my wife noticed our daughter crying. She went in to see what was going on. We lived upstairs in a two-story apartment complex. When she entered the room, she saw my son hanging halfway out of the window with our daughter holding on to him by his jacket. He was hanging out of the second-story window face first, with our daughter holding on to him for dear life. White-knuckled and toes dug into the mattress, she strained with all of her might to prevent her brother from falling to his potential demise. Thankfully, my wife arrived in time and grabbed him, and nobody was hurt. If I thought to ask her if she got tired of holding him, I believe she would have told me, he's not heavy, he's my brother.